Look, we've tried since April to get a meeting with the Prime Minister. It's clear now we won't get that meeting. Um, Minister Littleproud has reached out. I'll be meeting him in a few weeks. Um, it is very, very disappointing that we weren't listened to earlier because we actually predicted exactly what's happening now and measures could have been taken months ago uh, to make the firefighters more effective and uh, to make communities safer. Earlier this week, though, there seemed to be some suggestion that the government, could, the Deputy Prime Minister, hadn't even heard of you. So just who are you, I guess, for our audience, if they're wondering whether you have the authority to speak as you've been speaking? Look, we're probably not uh, the way we were described by the Deputy Prime Minister, but look, that's OK. He didn't know about us and we didn't correspond with him directly. Um, we're former commissioners, chief, chief officers of every urban and rural fire service in Australia, um, some SES, state emergency service um, agencies and forestry and national parks firefighting units. So right across the board of firefighting, um, experts who have hundreds and hundreds of years of cumulative experience and all of us have seen conditions change over the years, supercharging the bushfire problem and it's all down to climate change the burning of oil, coal and gas. Now, and that's, we have to tackle that base problem. But now the cost of adaptation and community resilience is just going to skyrocket, as we've seen with these catastrophic fires. What should be happening now? Look, we, we had some pretty simple asks that we wanted to talk to the government about, government about um, for example, funding for large aerial fire tankers. People would have seen the images the other day of the Hercules coming in, dropping 15,000 litres of retardant at Taramurra. Um, I watched that with great interest because I was in charge of the fire there in 1994 where 17 homes were lost. Um, that cut the fire off immediately. And we only, we're only going to have seven of those this year. One was bought by the New South Wales government. The rest come from the Northern Hemisphere who have their own fire problems. I've just been in California. Um, if they'd have spoken to us back then, maybe they could have allocated more money to have more of those aircraft, but they didn't, and they're probably not available now. So, given, that, your, given your experience, what do you think summer is going to look like for Australia? Uh, look, it's the worst I've ever seen. Uh, my father was a volunteer firefighter before me from the 1950s, had a deep understanding of the bush. Um, he went through the 1939 bushfires, the heat wave, uh, he was just, he'd been shaking his head since 1994. But look, the build up is the worst I've ever seen. Um, the weather conditions, we keep breaking records 6th of September, 8th of November, 12th of November, Queensland and New South Wales. Weather records are being broken in terms of fire danger. And we're not even into summer. Um, large fire, house lost, fire, lost fires in the past in New South Wales were between November and February. Then 2013, it happened in early October. We've lost more homes so far than in 1994, our, one of our worst fire years, and it's November. So um, it's supercharged and we must do something about climate action. We must back up our firefighters on the ground far more than the federal government is. And it's a cop out to say it's state and territory's responsibility solely. And Greg, just very briefly, can I ask you what your thoughts are on the political debate that we've seen this year? And it'll have to be brief, Greg. Ah, uh, no comment. I think people can make their own mind up about that.